You're not going to believe it, guys. Unfortunately, our favorite amino acid has been shown to drive cancerous growth. But does that mean that I'll be stopping taurine supplements for the rest of my life? Nope. And this is why. In today's video, what we're going to be doing is exploring how taurine may drive cancer growth. This particular study was an interesting one, but I'm going to break it down so that you guys need to weigh up whether or not you think it is worthwhile to continue supplementing with taurine or you should drop taurine from your supplement protocol. So here they state energy drink warning as ingredient linked to cancer. So all over the news, there's been a lot of reports and news articles making some outlandish, crazy claims that taurine drives cancerous growth. Just a reminder, Taurine is a crucial amino acid that is conditionally essential for human beings. Remember that. It's abundant in the body, it's abundant in the brain, heart, and also breast milk. Now, ironically, in one of my previous videos, I was outlining how taurine supplementation actually makes animals live healthier and longer. And it does this through many different pathways. And we can see its effects on aging hallmarks, affecting senescence, intercellular communication, telomere shortening, nutrient sensing, epigenetic changes, genomic instability, loss of proteostasis, mitochondrial dysfunction, and stem cell exhaustion. Taurine targets many of these different pathways. And many people have been shown that when they have a taurine deficiency, it is associated with poor health, such as diabetes, obesity, liver disease, abdominal obesity, inflammation, hypertension, high glucose, and an elevated BMI. But before we get into this particular study, I wanna share one that actually outlines taurine and its anti-cancer functions in vivo and in vitro. So bear in mind, there's a lot of preliminary earlier research outlining that taurine actually possesses anti-cancer properties. But this particular study that I wanna point out that's been circulating news websites and being spoken about online was titled, Taurine from Tumor Niche drives glycolysis to promote leukemiogenesis. So basically, this study reveals that taurine, which is a molecule produced by bone marrow stromal cells, plays a pivotal role in the progression of aggressive myeloid leukemias. Researchers discover that taurine is synthesized by osteolineage cells and taken up by leukemia stem cells through the taurine transporter. Now, this uptake activates the mTOR pathway, enhancing glycolysis and promoting leukemia progression. Inhibiting either the taurine production or taurine uh, transporter function impaired these leukemia cell growths and growth and improved survival in experimental models. So what they're stating here is that moreover, combining taurine transporter inhibition with the drug venetoclax showed synergistic effects against leukemia cells. These findings suggest that targeting the taurine transporter access could offer a novel therapeutic approach for treating myeloid leukemias. If you're someone that's been trialing different supplements and you're still lacking that energy, spark, drive, and overall vitality, then you may wanna check out my brand new supplement that I've just released called Katwa Pure. Katwa Pure harnesses the power of a particular Amazonian herb known as Katwaba bark, which has been used for centuries to boost mood, enhance energy levels, and act as an aphrodisiac. So definitely check out Katwa Pure, you can learn more by visiting inbeforesups.com. Why I'm not so concerned about this particular study. Number one, taurine doesn't directly cause cancer. The study highlights that taurine's role in helping already existing leukemia cells grow. This doesn't mean that taurine itself triggers cancerous growth. So if you have leukemia, then you may not want to supplement with taurine. Okay, you may not want to use this amino acid. Unlike glutamine, which also has some potential anti-cancer effects, that actually directly fuels cancer uh, cells through energy pathways. Taurine simply supports cells that have already transformed into cancerous states. So I wanna also emphasize that context matters. Taurine was produced by specific bone marrow cells, osseolineage cells and then taken up by leukemia cells. The problem here is the transport and metabolism mechanism, not the presence of taurine itself. So it doesn't mean that if you take taurine, that it's actually gonna make its way in this particular area within bone marrow cells 
and then taken up by leukemia cells. That's not necessarily going to happen. And the cancer supportive role of taurine seems specific to certain leukemia cell, uh, stem cell environments, not a universal cancer promoting trait. So that's really important to keep in mind that this is not a universal um, cancer stimulating effect. Now, taurine's overall health benefits have been well established. Taurine consistently shows benefits for metabolic health, mitochondrial function, liver health, cardiovascular protection. A single study identifying a unique scenario, leukemia cells hijacking taurine metabolism, doesn't negate decades of beneficial research. I would still consider taurine as the wonder amino acid. Now, blocking taurine transport was the real key here. The study found that blocking the taurine transporter or limiting taurine synthesis in the bone marrow suppressed cancer cell growth. The issue is the metabolic hijacking of taurine, not taurine itself. So basically what we're establishing here from this study is that it's the taurine transporter. And if we block that taurine transporter or limit taurine synthesis in bone marrow specifically, that suppresses cancer cell growth in already existing cancer cells. A similar phenomenon could theoretically happen with multiple nutrients under pathological conditions. So the bottom line is, yes, this is an interesting mechanism insight, but it remains to be highly specific to aggressive leukemia contexts. Taurine itself is definitely not a pro-cancer compound in the broader sense and remains overwhelmingly beneficial for healthy metabolism and cellular functioning. So what am I doing with this particular research? Number one, yes, I'll be flagging it and I'll be keeping an eye on whether or not taurine aggravates any other leukemia related studies or has any effect outside of this particular transporter. Yes, I'll flag it. But will I continue taking taurine every single day? The answer is yes. I'll be taking three to six grams of taurine every single day for a long, long, long time <laughs> until I see any further research that reflects that taurine is directly causing cancer or if there's any other major harmful effects like spiking prolactin or lowering testosterone, which it doesn't do. So yeah, this is interesting research. I will be flagging it, but I don't think we need to be as scared as what the news always tends to make us feel. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know, are you gonna be continuing to take taurine or will you be stopping abruptly? Leave a comment down below, guys. As always, thanks for tuning in. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.